This is the I Will Teach You a Language podcast, episode 173. Welcome to the I Will Teach You a Language podcast. Weekly motivation and language learning tips to help you become fluent in any language. Now, here's your host, Ollie Richards. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the I Will Teach You a Language podcast. Thanks so much for being here. Here in London, we're getting the first signs of spring today. It's quite nice. I'm sitting here in front of an open window. You can probably hear the, the noise outside. And... um it's about 15 degrees, nice breeze. It's that time of year, you know, things are looking positive. It's been quite funny recently. We've been um, testing my uh, my new conversations project, which I've mentioned many times here before. We've got a, a special Facebook group. Some of you may be in the group even. Uh, over 100 people are in there now testing the samples of material that are currently in French, Italian and Mandarin Chinese. And it's been so funny seeing the, the different reactions from people because like, to exactly the same material, you have so many different uh kinds of feedback like one guy said um oh you've got to be honest i didn't enjoy these at all <laughs> and then uh, someone else said um i'm really loving working with these materials thanks so much for making them and then someone else said um you know ollie you asked whether we would enjoy whether we would want to study with this kind of material and the answer is a resounding yes and then everything in between. So it's been so interesting to see that. And I'm obviously really looking forward to getting this out into the world. It's still a few months away um, currently at the time of recording um, because basically we're working with the samples right now. And then once we get all the feedback and we, we're confident that the um, the product is as good as, as I want it to be, then um, that's the point where we then develop the full thing with all the dialogues and, and everything. That's going to take, obviously, some time. But the aim of this is really to make this into the like the, the, the go-to resource for listening practice in a language. So if you start learning French, for example, and you really want to be able to understand native, native speakers in French, like where do you go? Like what do you use? And this is going to be the resource that you need across different levels. So you have your resource for A2, for B1, for B2, different proficiency levels, a solid collection of um, of material. I'm re- really, really excited about it. But anyway, enough of that. I'm sure you'll hear a lot more about that in due course. I'd like to thank the sponsors of the show, who are italki, of course, as you know, and they're the place that I get my language lessons every week. And if you want to get a free lesson with a professional teacher, you can go to iwillteachyourlanguage.com forward slash free lesson i highly recommend you do now let's get straight into today's question from selman hello ollie richard my name is selman jaffer i'm from algeria first of all i really want to thank you for your podcasts because are really useful i kind of take them as a sort of motivation before i was just like motivation when i discovered your blog i became full of motivation I already listened to your podcast entitled How I Can Stay Motivated in My Language Learning. Frankly speaking, I fixed this problem because of this episode. Briefly, how many hours a week do you spend to learn a language? Thank you, really, Ollie Richard. Hey, Selman, and thank you so much for your question. It's great to hear from you, and I'm really... Well, I'm so pleased that 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 the podcast has helped you, and that these, especially that episode on motivation, has helped you solve your motivation problem. I mean, that's that's so cool for me to hear. So, you know, good good work, congratulations, um, and 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 keep it up. Someone, you have asked a question that has never come up on the podcast before, which is awesome. Which is, how many hours a week do you study? Now, a related question is, how many hours does it take to learn a language, or how many hours of study? Um, there are lots of estimates around this the, the foreign service institute in the u.s has has classified languages and said how many hours of study are required personally i think that's it's mostly meaningless because uh it totally depends what you do everybody is different everybody is in different situations so i'm not going to answer that question of how many hours does it take to learn a language because i don't think you can really but what i'm going to talk about is me and how much time i spend learning languages so here's what i aim for my ideal week is like this Every morning, I study for one hour. Yeah, that's it. (laughs) Every morning, I study for one hour, basically. And that's kind of focused, concentrated study. Throughout the day, depending on what I'm doing, um, I would then kind of look at flashcards and I will do some listening as well. You know, if I'm on the train, for example, sometimes, sometimes I stay at home, so I don't 
have any dead time, but if I do, then I'll spend time on flashcards and, and listening, and that can be anywhere from nothing to 60 minutes. And then I try to have at least three speaking sessions during the week, which can last from 30 to 60 minutes. So in total, we'd be looking at about five hours of study and three hours of speaking. And on top of that, um, would you you then add like things like watching TV, reading books, going out and meeting people, et cetera, et cetera. So it really kind of depends how you define study. Um, the thing is, for me, there, like you can spend, you can have 10 different people studying for an hour each and they will do totally different things. So there's no such thing as study as such, because that means different things to different people. Some people study really well. Other people can study for hours and kind of waste their time. So that's why I really like to have one hour of focus study in the morning, because that's like it's it, it it happens in the morning. I'm fresh. It's before I start the day so I don't get distracted. Um and I just make whatever it is, whatever the precise activities that I'm doing, I try to make sure that I'm really, really focused for that one hour. And I kind of find that, um, you know, m- my friend Alex Rawlings said to me once that one hour a day of study is about the maximum useful time. And I was, I always found that interesting. It seemed quite low, but I know what he means now. And I, and I kind of agree with that. If I study for more than one hour, it's like I almost learn too much stuff and I can't process it. So I like to aim for this one hour in the morning and I don't do it every day. I'll do it maybe five days a week and maybe not do it at the weekends. But that, those, those, that, that, those one hour sessions in the morning, um, are the kind of engine of my, of my learning. And I would need, that has to happen. All right. If you don't do that, then what are you left with? Well, you're left with like grabbing bits of time here on the train or on the bus or, whatever, maybe the odd speaking session, you know, you have to study if you're in the learning phase. And so that's why I like to have this dedicated time. So we'll be looking at about, you know, anywhere between, I'd say about five hours of study and maybe up to 10 hours of total time spent with the language every week. Now, here's the thing. I don't do this all the time. So this is my, I've talked about my ideal, but I would often have things happen in my life that means I, I can't study. So, for example, I didn't study yesterday. I didn't do any Cantonese yesterday uh, because I was coming back from my parents' place out in the countryside. Um, I had a lot of work to do um, and I didn't do any Cantonese yesterday. But that's fine. You have to take days off and you can't be too hard with yourself, as someone recently reminded me on a, on a comment on a, on a blog post. So, you, you know, you, I, I don't stick to this schedule all the time. Some hours I don't do any speaking. I, in the, for the last... Last week, I didn't do any speaking, for example, because I was traveling. And that's okay. But what I find is that whatever happens in my life, whether however busy I am, whatever else is going on, the the schedule that I've described to you here is pretty much what I tend to gravitate back to because I find it's the most effective. It's an hour a day of focused study, three speaking sessions, um, and then as much kind of extra stuff as you can do during the day in, in, in your dead time. This is um, what I do when I'm actively learning a language. Now, for languages I already speak fairly well, um, I don't really study them anymore. I just use them. And for this, I don't really call this learning a language. I just call this using, living, maintaining a language, whatever you want to call it. Um, So, you know, the, the schedule that I've talked about is really what's happening when you are actively learning a language, which I guess some of you is probably um, English right now. It's many people have this attitude and I've had this before as well of thinking, OK, if I could just study for six hours a day, I'd be fluent next week. But it doesn't work like that. Study is the foundation. You have to study. But your success with a language depends so much more on the wider range of activities you do. Okay, so you're studying. Great. But are you speaking? And are you speaking with people who will speak to you in that language? Are you reading books? Are you going back and reviewing the things you've studied? One of the things I like to do when I when I have time and when I remember is at the end of the day to actually add a little kind of review session. So I would kind of uh, sit down for 10, 15 minutes and just go back and look at the things I studied that morning. You know, that really helps consolidate and really helps you remember things. 
Um, so it's much the, for me, the question is not so much how many hours do you spend studying, but how are you studying? How are you studying in a smart way? And that's really what I try to focus everything, all my work here on the blog, on the podcast on is getting you to study as smart as possible. But for, for most people, if you aim for an hour a day and you really focus and you apply the methods that we talk about here on the podcast, you're going to find that you that you succeed. Now, of course, you may go abroad and you may go to some kind of immersion environment where you're surrounded by the language all day, every day. And that's great if you can do it. Um, most people can't. So, you know, it's difficult to talk about that and be and be relevant. Thank you for your question, Simon. I hope that was helpful. I hope that gives you an idea of like whether you are a lot on the right lines or not, you know, whether you are kind of doing the right thing. If you'd like to read a transcript of this episode, you can find it at the show notes. Literally every word I've said, you can read along, which is a great study technique. And you can find that at IWillTeachYouAlanguage.com forward slash episode 173. Now, if you'd like to leave me a question like someone did, then you can do that. And you can do it by going to IWillTeachYourLanguage.com forward slash ask. Now, at the end of every episode, I like to leave you with a resource of some kind on the show. And in the spirit of this question of, okay, well, how often do you study? What's your routine? One of the most impactful blog posts I've ever written um, is called Core Study Time in Your Language Routine. And it is all about, um, we've actually been talking about this in the last few episodes. It's about how do you study in the most effective way? So go and read that blog post because it sums up um, everything that I've been talking about here. And, I, and I, I describe my routine in lots of detail. So again, to read that blog post, you can find a link to that in the show notes. One more time, that's IWillTeachYourLanguage.com forward slash episode 173. Thank you so much for listening and I'll see you back in the next episode of the podcast.